Okay. We just carry on the slides remain from the lecture. For this example, where the acceleration is a function of time, we solve part A and part B remain. As we mentioned in the lecture, when you have this one, this is deceleration, it means decreasing of the acceleration. And for acceleration, in fact, if this is positive, the acceleration is negative, because deceleration al always have has the opposite sign of acceleration. <laughs> Therefore, this is my acceleration. versus time. For this part it's zero, then it's opposite sign, then constant again we have zero. By time two second Zero between two and four, you have a linear variation. Here we have minus four G, then it's constant four to six. And between six to eight, second it's zero the question asks to find the velocity at t equals to eight second you start from definition of the acceleration which is nothing more than the first time derivative of velocity if we integrate from both sides, as we had many times in the lecture, between 0 and t. Therefore, your v is equal to v0 plus a dt between 0 to t. This is given in the question which is 100 meter per second and the V at time equal to 8 second means here we need to put T equal to 8 it's 100 plus 0 to 8 A D T because the function has different values or different behavior or different expression for different time intervals here is zero a constant value here is linear again in this time interval is constant value here is zero it's easier to divide in this integration in different parts what we can do, we can say 100 plus 0 to 2 ADT for this one plus 2 to 4 I just divide the integration domains in a smaller domain 0 to 2, 2 to 4 ADT plus 4 to 6 ADT plus 6 to 8 ADT. Now we know the value 
of the acceleration between 0 to 2 is 0 then the first integration is 0 here the acceleration between 2 and 4 is a line you have the coordinate of this point and coordinate of this point it's 2 0 here and here the coordinate is 4 and minus 4 g you can write or work out the line equation replace here and take integration but the easier way is to go through the graphical approach we know the integration of acceleration with respect to time is nothing more than between 2 and 4 the area under the curve over this domain and the area under the curve of acceleration here is a this area is a rectangle and it's minus because it's below the horizontal line it's this one is 4 minus 2 is 2 1 over 2 by 2 by minus 4g this is minus 4g then the area is 2 by 2 is minus 4g in this integration which is nothing more than the area under the acceleration curve between 2 and 4 seconds it's minus 4g and again the area of acceleration curve between 4 and 6 which is a rectangle this is minus 4g and this is 6 minus 4 which is 2 this area, the area of this rectangle is minus 8g and between 6 and 8 the magnitude of the acceleration is 0 then this one is 0 therefore your V at t equal to 8 seconds is equal to 100 minus 4g minus 8g which is nearly 17.68 meter per second and this is the solution of part B of the example now we go to another case when the acceleration is function of velocity when the acceleration is function of velocity we start from the definition of the acceleration and at the same time we know acceleration is function of velocity from these two the left hand sides are equal then the right hand side should be equal as well dv dt equals to the function of v if we rearrange this expression we have dv over fv we just take all the v variables the velocity variables to one side and t from 0 to t this is V naught. This is nothing more than T. And we know if you take this is a function of velocity and you take the integration with respect to velocity, at the end here you have a function of velocity. We call it GV and on the right hand side you have time therefore t is equal to g v if we take the inverse of the function v is equal to g 
minus t. In fact, inverse I mean we apply g inverse to both sides. If we apply g inverse to both sides, and left hand side is g inverse t, and right hand side you have g inverse v, and we know this is 1, the whole thing is v. Then here you have velocity as a function of time, or you can call it capital GT. When we have velocity as a function of time, then using the definition of the velocity, which is nothing more than the first derivative of the displacement with respect to time, if we take integration from both sides, as we had many times before, you have gt t. This is a function of time. You take integration with respect to time. At the end, you have a function of time. Therefore, you have displacement as a function of time. And this is what we want. We always want velocity as a function of time and displacement as a function of time. You see the acceleration was function of velocity, yes. But at the end, what we want, we want to have velocity as a function of time. And this is always we prefer to have velocity and displacement as a function of time. OK. We went through this mathematical formulation. But definitely, they are not examinable. You will not, you will not be asked in the exam to drive these things. But the examples are very important. To make clear the concept, we go through one example. You can see here we have an airplane. The initial velocity is zero. It means it starts from rest. Unfortunately, the acceleration in general is not constant. This is a constant value, but this is a function of velocity. Acceleration is a function of velocity in general. When the acceleration is not constant, we cannot use the simplified formulation which we derived for constant acceleration. You should be careful. Then this constants are given here and the question is how much distance you need for takeoff to reach this speed 250 km per hour using two assumptions first assumption is the drag term is excluded drag term is this one it means you don't have drag term. For this case, your acceleration is equal to A naught, which is 2 meter per, should be this one second squared. This is the type in this case. Then for this case, we have constant acceleration because there is no drag term. A equals to A naught equals to 2 meter per. First, we solve for part A. For part A, everything is easy because we have constant acceleration and we can use this relationship V2 minus V0 2 equals 2A. 
S minus is not. If I put my coordinate system here, the origin, and this is the positive direction. This is a rectilinear motion, it means we have only motion in one direction. This is, okay, when I put origin of the coordinate system here, it means the initial position of my object or particle is not is equal to zero. This is zero. And S is equal to we don't know. We want to find it out. The acceleration is a naught is positive. Two be careful about the units. It's two meter per second squared. This is the metric units. And the acceleration is positive, it's clear because your velocity is increasing from zero to some positive value. The V value you have is 250, but you need to change the units to convert it to metric you can follow whatever you want as a unit but just to just make sure your units are consistent to convert this one I need to multiply kilometer by 1000 10 to the power of 3 and one hour is equal to this is meter 3600 seconds and this is over and initial velocity is zero then here everything is null except s from this one if we calculate your s is 1206 the unit is meter. This is the solution of part A when your acceleration is constant. But for part B, your acceleration is not constant anymore. You should be careful. When the acceleration is not constant, as we had in different examples before, we usually start from initial definition. This is initial definition of acceleration. And acceleration we know is function of velocity. This is a constant which is given is 2 meter per second squared k is a constant and velocity this one I can rewrite it as we had before using change of variable dv over ds ds over dt equals to dv over ds and if you look at this one this is nothing more than the definition of velocity from these two the left hand sides are equal then right hand sides should be equal you have dv over ds multiply by v is equals to a naught minus k v2. If I take all the velocity variables to one side and all the displacement variables to another side and take integration from both sides, I will have ds from s naught which is zero because we put the coordinate system origin here. This is positive direction 
to s equals to v naught starts from rest zero to v which is 250 meter per second v over a naught minus kv2 dv and don't worry if you don't know this integration if the integration is complicated usually the form general formulation will be provided in the exam for example this general relationship will be provided to you and you can follow the same pattern because this is not the calculus course and if the integration is very complicated the formulation will be provided you can see here your x variable is v yes your a here is a naught yes then I need to replace it with my a here is a naught my x here is v and my b which is the coefficient of x squared or v squared is k my b is k then using this general formulation this is nothing more than s minus 0 s equals to 1 over 2k natural logarithm ln a naught minus kv2 Okay, A naught is given, K is given, just be careful about the units, make sure all of them are in a consistent unit system. If you replace your final answer for displacement, takeoff displacement is 100 meters. And if you compare this value with the value which we calculated in part A, in part A, this value, you see it we, you need more distance or more take of distance to reach the same amount of velocity because we have drag force, we have air resistance which physically makes sense okay this one was example that the acceleration was function of velocity in the last part we look at the examples when the acceleration is function of displacement again because we don't have a constant velocity we start from general definition of the acceleration and here is a function of s okay here if I do change of variable a equals to dv over ds and ds over dt and this is nothing more than the definition of the velocity and again on left hand side we have equal variables then the right hand side should be equivalent as well Therefore, dv 
3 dv over ds is equal to fs. If you rearrange and take integration from both sides, you just take all the velocity variables to one side and all the displacement variables to another side. You see here f is a function of s, you integrate it with respect to s, then in general at the end whatever you have is some function of s, which is displacement. And this one is 1 over 2 v squared minus v not a squared. Then you have v squared equals to v not a squared plus 2gs which this is a constant constant is not function of anything this is function of s then the whole thing is a function of s we can call it qs for example then you have velocity as a function of displacement And at the same time, or maybe it's better we take a square root. Yes. And you have plus minus here. We ignore it. Depends on your coordinate system. You can select whatever you want. But because here we go through the general lap formulation, we don't care about the sign. Because sign depends on your coordinate system and sign convention. And also we know the v, ds over dt, equals to some qs, some function of s. From this one, if you rearrange, dt is equals to qs over, sorry, ds over Qs. And again, if you do integration from both sides, you have dt from 0 to t. Here you have integration s0 to s, ds over qs. Here is time. Here you have, this is a function of time, you integrate with respect to time you have some function of s yes p s for example therefore therefore t is equal to p s if we take inverse or equivalently apply p inverse to both sides, left and side, we have this one p inverse p s is equal to s then s equals to p inverse of t or in general we can say this is qt, another function of time. Then we have displacement as a function of time. This is always we want, as I mentioned before. Displacement as a function of time, this is what we want. And if we take the derivative with respect to time, left and side is nothing more than the velocity, and this is dqt over T. And because Q is a function of time, capital Q, its derivative with respect to time is a function of time. Yes, you can call it LT. Therefore, we have velocity as a function of time, as always we want. You can see the acceleration was function of displacement, but at the end what we want both displacement and velocity as a function of time. 
which you can see both of them now are function of time again those derivations are not examinable we just go through them to make the concept a little bit more clear but to make everything clear we go through one example in this example your acceleration is not constant is function of displacement in part a is easy because it says assume a constant gravitational acceleration but part b you have a variable acceleration for part a first I need to put my coordinate system and make clear my sign conventions okay I put my coordinate system here at the center of the moon this is the origin of my coordinate system O and the sign convention I use this one positive I put R you can put S Y whatever you want doesn't matter these are just notation because here we have variation or sorry radial variation I prefer to use notation R but you can you can see the initial position of the particle is S naught which is positive because it's a positive side and is equal to H yes plus this is the radius of the moon we call it RM H plus RM and the final position when the particle impacts on the moon is S S is equal to RM then I just write it here initial position for this coordinate system which I chose HRM and S equals to RM initial velocity it's released from rest is equal to zero feet per second and the hedge be careful here is mile here's a feet if I multiply by 5280 you can change the units to fit acceleration we know the acceleration is this in this direction towards center of moon and because we assumed this direction be positive direction for radial variation and acceleration is negative here is the magnitude of acceleration but for our coordinate system is negative and she's um, and we change the units to this is fit because for part A we have constant acceleration problem we can easily use this formulation
S minus is not. This is minus H. And we have the H. You have this one, which is minus 5 point something, and the units are consistent. You have V naught, then everything you have. If you replace, you have plus minus because the quadratic equation 6400 don't forget to put the units which one is acceptable we assume this direction be positive and we know the direction of the velocity at the impact point is in opposite direction then the accepted result is minus. This is the solution for part A. But for part B, we cannot use this formulation because the acceleration is not constant anymore. Then what's the acceleration? If you forgot, you can look at the video podcast of this lecture slides, these two, which we derived the acceleration as a function of the radial coordinate system. what we derived it was a equals to the constant acceleration for h equal to zero the radius of the moon to the power of two and r which is the distance between the center of two objects this is r and this is our coordinate system as well. Okay, we know the direction of acceleration is towards the center of the moon. Then based on this sign convention here, we have a minus. Because acceleration is not constant, we cannot use those simple formulations. As usual, we start from the definition by change of variable dv over dr dr over dt as I told you you can put s you can put y you can put x doesn't matter these are just notation here I use r because we have radial variation and this is nothing more than the definition of the velocity v d v r the left hand sides are equal then the right hand sides should be equal as well therefore v dv over dr is equal to minus gm naught this is a constant this is the radius of the moon is constant if we take integration they can come out of integration we just take all the radial coordinates to one hand side and all the velocity variables to another side and take integration v dv v naught is zero in this case because it's released from the rest as question says these two constant comes out of integration and r m squared integration of v r over r squared now the important point is the boundary of this integration here is the initial position of the particle 
here you see this is the radius of the moon rm rm plus h yes rm r naught is equal to r m which is the moon radius plus h r naught equals to r m plus h this is the lower boundary of the integration plus h but at the upper the final position or the position of the particle at the time of impact its impact with the moon surface is here you can see it's rm it is positive the upper is equal to rm and we, this integration is very easy you know this integration is 1 minus r yes then if you and this 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 one is nothing more than v squared over 2 therefore if you simplify it you have v equals to 2 gm naught which is the constant is given in the equation radius of the moon this is divided by 2 this is divided by but be careful this is a mile you need to change it to feet this is the diameter of the moon divided by 2 h is given just convert it to feet over rm plus h again here you have plus minus and because this sign convention the accepted answer is minus yes Here, sorry, you have plus minus four thousand and nine hundred ninety feet. Don't forget to put the units, and here the radius and h should be converted from mile to feet. And this is the answer of this example.